Good morning. It is 6.39 a.m. on Thursday, June 2nd, 2016. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. Goodness. Uh, excuse me. Um, so, contrary to appearances, I am, in fact, awake. I did, in fact... Get up, as previously stated. I am very tired, though. I was up a little bit late last night, but not that late. And yet, I am really dragging this morning. Um, uh, even once the alarm went off, Luna had to whine at me for a while because I was just laying in bed listening to the radio. Ah. Uh, we recorded uh, Beyond the Wall last night, so that next episode uh, should be going up, uh, talking about the latest episode of Game of Thrones there. And, uh, you know, so now, just kind of... What? <laughs> uh, I... Gave into temptation to read a few of yesterday's new comic books in bed after recording the podcast. Hindsight, I think, probably a mistake. Oh, goodness, my nose is running now. Um, but the, so despite the fact that I am really tired right now, uh, there were some good comic books. I mostly read the ones uh, that for this week's installment of uh, The Road to Civil War Two, and then of course Civil War Two, issue number one, start of this latest uh, event story in the Marvel comic book universe. Um, it, it's a sad beginning to this story um, because it results in the, uh, the certain death and uh, apparent probable death of two loved comic book characters. Um, not, uh, you know, to, to anyone who's only familiar with the movies, well, I guess. All right, I'm going to spoil the events of Civil War Two issue number one, so if you don't want to hear that, uh, come back to this video later. So, um... The basic premise is that there is a new inhuman um, who is able to see the future. And there's the debate is on whether you should try using their visions to change the future before it happens. And uh, although I'm sure that the issue will become more complex at least at this point in the um, in the story, this early point, uh, Tony Stark as the person who thinks that we shouldn't do that um, seems a little unreasonable because it's like he's saying like we shouldn't even try because we don't know the answers to all these questions, and it's like well. But yeah, I couldn't. How do you how do you propose to find out those answers unless you try? You know, it's so it's it seems like it's some of the possible ethical problems with that idea. You know, as like in Minority Report, for example, um, trying to arrest someone for a crime that they haven't committed yet just because you believe that they would have committed it. That gets into a gray area. But uh, we don't really have that gray area here. So he, his side, he comes across as a little bit unreasonable at this point. Although I, I believe that there will be more complex iterations of the debate as the series progresses. Uh, so Iron Man is on that side. And then Captain Marvel is kind of heading up the other side of like hey, you know, we need to be proactive here. There's a lot of dangerous things in the world, and if we can stop threats before they, you know, before they become greater threats, then we should do that. 
Um, so yeah, you know that, and that's that's an interesting setup for this uh, this event. But basically, what happens in the the first attempt? So the series starts with basically a huge success resulting from the knowledge that a big celestial thing was going to attack. Um, and then, but the first time after the initial debate that they try to use this information, the attack is successful in stopping an attack from Thanos, but it uh, is not perfectly successful because uh, Rhodey, uh, aka War Machine, is killed uh, by Thanos, and She-Hulk is grievously injured and this leads to escalating the conflict in the uh, after this mission because Tony who is against using this inhumans visions in the first place is now saying you did it and you got my friend killed um, but see it's important to know that although people who only watch the movies if you are not aware uh, of course Rhodey and Tony Stark are friends, but uh, Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Uh, Captain Marvel, was actually also romantically linked with Rhodey at one point, so she has good reason to care about him, too. Um, whereas uh, Cap Captain Marvel is also more... Uh, she's closer to She-Hulk than Tony is. Um, and so She-Hulk you know, while in this hospital bed, basically says, it's our future, you know, don't let him take it. The idea being, don't let Tony stop us from doing the right thing is kind of, is that's, she sort of weakly manages to say that before flatlining. So is she actually dead? We will probably have to wait until the next issue to see. Um, but uh, the implication is that it's not good. So, um, some exciting, sad developments, um, but at least it it seems like the the conflict is at least so far. Um, it's I don't know. Anyway, that's where it is. I've my feelings about it are complex, and I think that a lot of it we'll have to wait to see how things play out. But uh, yeah, that's why I'm so tired right now. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow for five more minutes.